Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Now let's study the modern period table based on Mosley. So this guy, Mosley, in 1913, he showed that atomic number is a better fundamental property than atomic mass. And please note, atomic number itself was found by this guy. Because Till 1896, nobody knew what electron is. The atomic mass was all found by stoichiometric uh, equations by chemical reactions. 1896, this guy uh, Thomson, this guy Thomson found electron, and then uh, at that was the area where radioactivity was at peak, and this guy was a physicist, and he was able to uh, find a number of uh, electrons in a particular element by the rays it emits okay? by rays it emits so with that he was able to find number of elements number of electrons and there is nothing but the atomic number so he was he coined this word atomic number and he found the atomic number for all the elements and then he observed that if you use atomic number instead of atomic mass in the periodic table as used by Mosley it overcome a lot of limitations correct and that's what he did Also, electronic configuration is a perfect basis for classification of element. So this is also used because uh, there is a property that all the elements in a particular period, sorry, yeah, will have similar electronic configuration. So with that, we'll explain more when we learn uh, when we go through the detail of this uh, table. But the standard electronic configuration of a particular element is a better the perfect basis for classification of the element. Periodic law can be stated as properties of element are periodic function of the atomic number. Let me spend some more time on the electronic configuration. For example, I have element which has electronic position of 2A2. That means this guy is first, second, third, third period. Right? And this guy will tell you the group number. So this guy is second, that means it is the second group. So this is my element I am talking about. Let's suppose I have element 2, 3. So they are 2 for second, so it will be in second period. 2 and 3, so this guy is 3, so 3 is group 30, right? So this guy is this guy. So just by electronic configuration, you can actually tell the location of the element in the periodic table. We'll explain more on this, but just understand what this guy atomic number did with the Mosley periodic table, right? It corrected everything. The first thing is the position of isotope is clear now. Why? Because isotope, you see that all these elements will have same atomic number. For example, C6, right? You have 12, 13 and 14. But if you see all these have similar atomic number, since they have similar atomic number, there will be only one place for carbon, correct? And that's one. So, since it is no longer based on atomic mass, there is no confusion of isotopes. The position of cobalt and nickel is clear now. You see, the cobalt and nickel is now properly arranged, right? It, when you talk about the atomic number, they are properly arranged at 27 and 28. When you talk about the atomic mass, Right, so they have some confusion because the atomic mass of cobalt is more than atomic mass of nickel. If you talk about atomic mass, when you talk about atomic number, cobalt is less than nickel. So since I'm, I'm since I'm using atomic number now, right? So this issue is all resolved. Position of hydrogen is very plain because as I told, it is done by the electronic configuration. If you see hydrogen is, atomic number is 1, electronic configuration is also 1. That means in the valence cell, the outmost valence cell, it has only one electron. So it is in, into 1 because in this, all the elements are present which has one electron in the outermost shell. So with this, they got a position for hydrogen because the formula for grouping is different now. It is not based on the hydrates in the oxide form, but 
Actually, it forms similar hydrogen oxide, but uh, it is based on this uh, electronic configuration. And also answer this question that whether it is possible to have an element of atomic number 1.5 between hydrogen and helium. We can say now no. Why? Because atomic number is natural number, right? So we can't have a natural number 1.5. Correct? So with that, this question, which was not answered that time, it is solved now because atomic number is a natural number. And a natural number can't be 1.5. That means if I say that how many elements can be between uh, 1 and 5, let's suppose, or 1 and 6, then I can say that there are 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 4 elements between 1 and 6. Right? If you talk about atomic numbers, but if you're talking about atomic mass, you tell that 1.2 and 5.8, the atomic mass of two different elements, how many elements can be there between these elements? You don't know because they all uh, decimal numbers, right? So this question will also answer this atomic number. So the only one correction that is using atomic number instead of atomic mass solved so many issues. So the modern periodic law says that the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic number. Please note, it is atomic number, not atomic mass, right? So the basis of this law is that when elements are arranged in um, increasing the order of atomic number, having same valence electron, when th this occurs at the regular, regular interval. So the outermost electron, the outermost shell, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is called valence electron. So there is a it follows a periodic function. If you keep increasing the, if you keep arranging the elements in the atomic, increasing atomic numbers, so we'll see that uh, uh, this uh, elements with the same number of valence electrons occurs in interval. For example, hydrogen, if you see, has one, right? Then you have helium, that is two. Then you have uh, lithium, again, that has one, right? So the way that's why it is then the helium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. If you see, I'll show you the table, it follows the periodicity. So let's see this uh, modern periodic table. So elements are based basically on the electronic continuum as I told. And there are 18 uh, vertical columns known as groups, 18 groups and seven horizontal uh, rows and they are known as periods. So if you see, they are periods, periods one, two, three, four like this and then they have groups correct why it's called groups just for the uh, memory tip to un understand this they are called groups because this group is having same property this group same property so if you tell a group because they have something same right some chemical property the same so all these groups have same pro property and that's why they are called groups if you take this bunch of elements they don't have same chemical property and that's why they are never called group right so group is same chemical property and that happens when you take the uh, you take the bunch in this fashion right and that's why they call groups correct and these are called periods as I told a modern periodic table has periods and groups let's understand the period in detail so horizontal rows of elements in a periodic table are called periods correct for example this is one period this is another period and there are some properties of periods. For example, every period has a consecutive atomic number. For example, this is 11, this guy is 12, this guy is 13, 14, 15, like this, right? So the elements in this period will have consecutive atomic numbers. Also, the number of elements in the period is fixed by the maximum numbers of electrons which can have in the valence shell. For example, the first guy I have not written here, it is hydrogen and this is helium. They have two, so the first is two, only two maximum elements can happen in the period. The second is eight, lithium, lithium one, that is eight. And then we have this guy, sodium, magnesium, this also has eight. This guy has 18, right? So that all depends, the number of, uh, the number of uh, elements, the number of elements is nothing but the maximum number of electrons in the shells, the outermost shells. And all the elements in a group has same number of shells because they have similar electronic configurations. And the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in a shell depends on this formula. You know this formula, 2n square, where n is the number of shells. Correct? 
and it is the valence electron which will be the first and it is the valence electron which decides which guy will be the first and which guy will be the last. For example, the one with the one valence electron will be the first, the one with the eight valence electron will be the last. Correct. Exception is the, the, the first one where helium has two. I mean, you can say that the one with uh, the one valence electron is the first and the one which has all the valence electron filled is the last. We'll see this first period if you see it has only two elements hydrogen and helium and it's called a very short period. See the second guy it has eight elements lithium, barium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine. This guy has eight this guy has two. It is also called a short one. Similarly the third one sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, silver, chlorine, organ it also has eight also called short and then we have a long one that is 18. This guy is 18. This guy also has 18. Right? This guy has 6, has 32. So it, it, it keeps increasing. I mean, they are 7 only. So this guy has uh, the one which is found also. So that's the way it is. So you see that we have different periods. The first period is a very short period then short and short then we have long and long and then we have very long and very long again okay. so we have seven periods and and if you see this all depends on the 2n square formula right it's 2 8 8 18 18 32 now let's see groups these are all called groups because they have same chemical property so if you see vertical columns in the periodic groups and Please note they don't have a consecutive atomic number. If you see it's 9, 17, 35, so they don't have consecutive atomic number as we have in periods. And they have same valence electron, though. You see helium, two electrons, sorry, one like neon, two electrons, argon, two, or everything has two electron valence, eight, sorry. Very sorry, there's an exception here. This guy has two, but apart from these, all has eight valence electron. You see here every, everybody has one valence electron. This guy is one, lithium is two one, sodium is two eight one, potassium is two eight uh, ten eight one. Right? So you see each and every guy has one valence electron. So here also but helium is the exception because helium's uh, cell is filled with two atoms. So but apart from that all are eight. Here also if you see it is two seven this 287 right so all are same they have similar electron electronic configuration they show similar physical and chemical property that is the main reason why they are grouped this is the first you can say critical property they have similar physical and chemical property and the number of shells increase as we go down if you see this guy has one shell this guy has two this guy has three this guy has four so the number of shells increase as we go no. So position of hydrogen as I told right, position this guy is placed here because it has electronic configuration similar to ultra metal. And we know that electronic configuration is a critical uh, thing to arrange the element. So there is no confusion now where hydrogen should be. Right? But actually if you see hydrogen is a non-metal, the greens one is a non-metals, and it is placed with a metal. Right? The hydrogen is placed with alkali, but the property of hydrogen is not similar to alkali because it's very small in size. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.